Welcome back to the Path to Happiness, Introduction to the Unification Principle. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. In our last session, we learned that since it was we who did not fulfill our portion of responsibility, but rather fell under Satan's dominion, it is we who are responsible to free ourselves from Satan's dominion and restore God's dominion over ourselves and the world. So it is our responsibility to set the necessary conditions of indemnity. Now, if it's up to us, we'd better understand how to set up these conditions. That's the topic of this session. Our wish and our hope is to find the path to happiness. We know now that this path is one of rebirth and resurrection. Rebirth comes through true parents' holy marriage blessing. And resurrection, walking the path of the principle, comes by following the true parents, the Messiah, as a couple and family. In our last session, we learned that in order to be reborn, we establish conditions of indemnity to separate from Satan, which means separate from selfishness. With this forgiveness from God, we can live with true sacrificial love and restore our relationships with God and with each other. When brothers and sisters are united, when brothers and sisters are united, then the parents can come back home. And that's how we receive true parents. For us fallen people to return to the state of creation and receive the true parents, the Messiah, what forgiveness conditions do we have to establish? We have to follow the path that Adam and Eve failed to follow. It's simple. We have to go on a path that is opposite of the one that led to the loss of the original creation. Then what was the failure of Adam and Eve? They lost two things. First, they lost faith in God's word. They disobeyed the commandment and they ate the fruit. Second, they lost their ability to love with God's original love. So we look at faith as relatively insubstantial or spiritual. Faith is something spiritual and love as something very substantial, even physical. Why? Because the love of Adam and Eve was ultimately to make them one flesh and produce children who are very substantial. So the fall means they lost faith and love, which we refer to as faith and substance. Therefore, we have to fulfill conditions of faith and substance to restore the position of Adam and Eve as they were before the fall. We do this step by step. Adam's faith and substance became one with Satan. So we have to find these two, faith and substance, centered on God. We have to take them away from Satan. We call these the foundation of faith and the foundation of substance. First, in order to establish the foundation of faith, we have to achieve three conditions of indemnity or forgiveness. The first is to stand in Adam's or Eve's position meaning to be God's central figure, a chosen one. Since Adam and Eve did not establish the foundation of faith, God called Cain and Abel, their sons, from their family. And he called Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, the kings, prophets, many central figures for the foundation of faith in the Bible. Today, that could be you or someone close to you. Second, is to establish a conditional object. That's an interesting term. What does it mean? Adam lost the foundation of faith by distrusting God's word. God's word, the commandment, was the conditional object in which to have faith. His heirs 
could not receive God's word directly. So God used things of the creation to represent his word and had people offer them to God. These offerings established the foundation of faith before the time of Moses in the Old Testament age. After Moses came, the law and the temple were the conditional objects for the foundation of faith during the Old Testament age. And in the New Testament age, the gospel and the sacraments were the conditional objects for the foundation of faith in Christianity. Now, the third component in the foundation of faith is a period of time. It represents Adam and Eve's growing period, which was lost. God's creation had a time process, and so does God's recreation. Most recorded foundations of faith in the Bible, as we will see, included the same numbers representing 12, for example, 120 years, or 21, for example, 21 days, or 21 years, 210 years, or 40, for example, 40 days fasting, 40 years in the wilderness, 400 years of, of kingship, and so forth. From our point of view, the condition of indemnity establishes a foundation of faith. But from God's point of view, it decides that you have separated from Satan and are therefore standing in a position from which he can work with you. This means that God takes ownership of you, of your offering, and of your results, and builds upon these. Next is the foundation of substance. For the foundation of substance, you also need a conditional object in order to establish this foundation. That is the condition of indemnity and forgiveness in order to remove the fallen nature. For us to get rid of our connection to fallen nature, which means selfishness and lust and greed and anger, we have, and establish the foundation of substance and restore our original nature of goodness and sacrifice and charity and compassion, we have to establish conditions of indemnity. To do this, we must take a path that is opposite to what led to the fall. There are four elements in this path. First, because the archangel could not love Adam, who was receiving more love from God, the inclination to see from one's point of view, not God's point of view, was formed. Satan looked at Adam from his own point of view, not from God's point of view. And we inherit this. It appears as envy, jealousy, and hatred. Therefore, in order to reverse this, I need to be in the position of the archangel and feel those things and throw them away and love that central person who is in the position of Adam, just as God loves them. Second, the archangel could not respect Adam, who was closer to God and was actually his mediator to God. The archangel should have gone to God through Adam and received God's love through Adam. He fell by trying to take Adam's place. So this is the inclination to leave your position. It's the sin of pride. To reverse this, a person in the archangel's position, such as me, must respect the person in Adam's position and receive God's love through that person as a mediator. So we want to find that person who's closer to God than we are and really learn from them and, and receive God's love through them. This is a restoration of that fallen nature. Third, because the archangel misled Adam and Eve, instead of rightly guiding them, the inclination to dominate others based on gaining benefit for oneself was formed. Therefore, in order to get rid of this fallen nature, I have to find the person in Adam's position 
overcome any distance I feel from them and make a strong, positive relationship. Fourth, the word of God was supposed to pass from God to Adam, Adam to Eve, and Eve to the archangel, multiplying goodness. But the archangel delivered the evil words to Eve, who passed them to Adam. Thus emerged the inclination to multiply evil. To get rid of this, I have to receive the good words through the central person and multiply goodness and not multiply blame or bad words about others. The method for getting rid of the four selfish inclinations of our fallen nature can be summarized from the viewpoint of a person in the position of Adam as love people from God's point of view, have a parental heart toward them, lead them to do good and overcome selfishness, and empower them to multiply this with others. From the perspective of a person in the archangel's position, we have to love people as God does, see God's love through them, cooperate with them, and inspire others to do the same. It's the foundation of substance because it changes us substantially. It gets rid of fallen nature, but it's a lot more difficult than it sounds. The foundation of faith and foundation of substance together are the foundation for God to send the Messiah, who will come as the true parents and give us rebirth and resurrection. The Bible shows us that the history of humankind was a journey to establish the foundation to receive the Messiah. We will see, as we study the Bible, that distrust, pride, and mistakes by chosen leaders, and the jealousy and pride and complaints and discontent and self-centeredness of the people in the archangel's position caused failures and delays. So we see how these principles work in our own lives and are not so easy to change. So we will look at some, in some detail at the biblical history of providential salvation and think about how to apply this history to ourselves. Thanks for listening and see you next time.